Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realise how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you may want to seek some professional help. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here. Let me first apologise about the slightly different setup to what you're used to. This room is a shit tip at the moment, and so I couldn't possibly let you see that. So we decided to go for this nice clear backdrop so it doesn't look quite as bad. But I digress, what you're here for is some Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Well, for today's video, we are going to be taking a look at one of my all-time favourite decks to play. Not very competitive in the modern game, but it is a ton of fun and can be done on a very, very tight budget, and that is JD Turbo. That's right, we're playing Light Sworn, obviously, and we're playing Judgment Dragon, obviously, so we're going to have a ton of fun with that. Now, if you are watching today's video and you're feeling inspired and you'd like to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! or even Pokemon singles for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store, and if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount, courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the video. Okay everyone, so first let me apologise if you do hear a whirring sound in the background. My laptop fans go absolutely fucking mental every time I ever record a video and as such sometimes it does get picked up in the background. Hopefully though that won't be the case here and the editing that I do will take care of it for you. But just be aware if you do hear that sound, that's exactly what it is. Now explain as for today's deck profile, we are doing a JD Turbo build. Of course, incredibly budget friendly now that we've had the likes of Starly Schaefer re-released and reprinted and all of the other cards are nice and easy to get hold of for the most part. So honestly, this deck can be run on a super budget. It's an ultimate glass cannon and it can be done... You know, in a situation where you can just win a game within like a turn or two, or you just instantly lose, which people don't mind. You know, you can play quick rounds, which is always a nice touch. And of course, you get to play Judgment Dragon, which is fucking hilarious. I mean, you think about it like this. Judgment Dragon's one of them cards, you know, you can just drop it, nuke the entire field. If your opponent really isn't ready, they don't have an interrupt on the game, on the, on board, you can normally drop a second and, just, you know, push for major damage. Or, of course, attack for game if it's a little bit later on, which does occasionally happen. But usually you're not going to get too grindy with this. You're going to just try and yeet your opponent as quickly as possible. And, of course, you get to have fun playing Light Sworn in the process. Again, this is a budget variant, so keep that in mind. You can run some slightly better cards there are some other options you can run in here if you have access to other cards. But this, generally speaking, is a really good way to play the deck. So it goes without saying that we're playing triple copies of Judgment Dragon. This is JD Turbo, so you want to see it as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, you will occasionally have games we open like all three and then, you know, your life's over. But there you go. It happens. Um, but you want to see this as quickly as possible. If you open one, you're normally in a good place because you're going to be able to search another and push for major damage pretty early on. As long as you haven't, like, super bricked or anything. We have triple copies of Starly Schaefer. You can normal summon these and then go into one of your Chaos Dragons. Or, of course, you can banish these from the grave to add back a JD that's been milled out. So, these are really, really good options to have in here. Uh, this deck does have quite a number of normal summons. Keep that in mind. Normally, I like to try and keep it a little bit lower. Uh, but, honestly, I think it's worth it in the way the deck runs. We run these because they're free bodies on board and free rank 4s if we want to go into them. If we want to be able to actually play another way. Being able to get into Minerva is actually crucial in this deck so that you can draw a bit deeper. You can mill out much quicker. Normally you're going to want to get into our first turn. Um, so this is just going to help you get over that line. If you do have the money to do so, I would recommend highly running Chaos Space in here as well for this package. It's just something that you really want to see uh, as quickly as you can because they really do give you such an advantage. Running triple copies of Lumina, this is, well, it's Lumina, it's pretty self-explanatory, it's just going to get your shit back out the grave. It's going to mill you extra cards, you could cut this down to two if you want it to be a bit more trim and run some other extenders, but I really like running the three in here. Running triple copies of Raiden, definitely the best Light Sworn monster, let's be honest. Uh, you need to run triple copies of this, there's no question of it. Uh, I really don't need to elaborate on it more than that, I believe. Triple copies of Wolf because it's uh, the second best Light Swarm monster. So again, you want to run triple copies of it. A single copy of Lila for getting rid of tricky, pesky back row, of which there's plenty at the moment. And again, it's just another name to put in here. And if nothing else, it can make you easily go into a rank 4. 
We then have double copies of Felice. This could potentially be cut down to one if you want to, but given that we're running a bigger Light Swan package, you're far more likely to mill this the way you want to, which is off a monster. The downside when you run it in other engines is, of course, it's more likely to get uh, sense the grave in other ways, more likely off uh, your charge of Light Brigade, which can make it not live at all. Double copies of this is really nice, so I think it's a really cool card to have in here. Again, though, if you want to reduce your chances of bricking a little bit, you might want to cut this down by one. A single copy of Garroth in here. Again, this is potentially uh, excess of our requirements, but honestly, having the extra names in here does not hurt you at all. The fact that it's searchable off Rota and, of course, all of the other Light Swan stuff. Uh, and it can also help you draw cards, which can be a bit of a good opportunity, especially if your opponent's playing particularly slow. It's not the end of the world to have this normal summoned alongside another Light Swan and getting digging deep. Minerva has the fringe benefit of being able to search JD, although I don't know if mathematically we can do it in here. I'm not going to work it out now. But this is mostly for the fact that if it gets milled, you can send something else. And of course, it's a tuner, so there is that as well. It gives you just more options. If you have access to something like uh, Christian Halka Fibrax, this can be a good option, especially for that as well. Again, I've omitted it from this particular build because we, uh, you know, we want to do this on a budget. And then our Solitary Twilight card. There are other Twilight cards that aren't terrible. Um, the Twilight Lila isn't too bad, uh, especially in Pendulum formats. But of course, there hasn't been one of them in a while because Pendulums can eat my ass. So we're going for a single copy of Raiko here. It's a non-target in Banish, which can actually come up an awful lot. And it's also the fact that if it's normal summoned or flip face up, the only downside with this is that it doesn't happen off a special summon as well. So that can be a bit of a pain in the ass. But honestly, this can be a really good bit of spot removal. Again, can be access to requirements. You can cut it if you really don't want to run it. But I do like having it in here. And of course, of nothing else, it's an extra name for the graveyard for JD. And then, you know, you have your moments like me where you just accidentally right-click and just delete a card out the deck. So we'll just pretend that didn't happen and then laugh at all the people who skip the entire video and can't understand why... This has such a weird count. Electromagnetic turtles here, just because if you mill it, it's great. And of course, the fact that you can use this to go into the likes of Curious. So having access to more types that are uh, a light attribute is always desirable. Electromagnetic turtle is another example of that. We then have a Performage package in here. This is Trick Clown, of course, because he's free. You can run Thousand Blades as well if you want to, just for another body on board for free rank fours, if you want to go a bit more down that route. Uh, damage Juggler is Damage Juggler. I probably don't really need to elaborate on this. And then Hat Tricker is just a free body on board. So it's either a free rank four, usually alongside another card, of course, or, of course, it's free link material. We then move on. I think that Solar Recharge is mandatory at three of, especially in a Light Swan heavy deck. Or, you know, run two if you right click like me. We'll pretend that didn't happen. Triple copies of Charge of the Light Brigade in here. Uh, mandatory. It, this is, again, probably the best card in the actual deck overall. This card's insane for what it does for you. The value is just unreal. You need to run triple copies of this. A uh, single copy of Regeki, a single copy of Harpies Feather Dust. So these are just for clearing out pesky cards. Of course, usually you're going to want to go second with this and just try and push for major damage. Rotor's in here because there's plenty of warriors to search with it. Foolish Burial because sending pretty much anything in this deck is a benefit. Triple copies of Dark Ruler no more. If you're playing against a combo deck this actually gives you a chance of winning the game. And then double copies of Light Sworn Judgment just to potentially make it easier to search JD. Again if you want to cut down on your bricks this could be a good option to remove for something else. And then onto our extra deck, double copies of Minerva because it's Minerva. Drawing cards, popping cards, milling cards, everything you could possibly want. We love this fucking card. A single copy of Digusto Emerald for being able to shuffle back good cards and then, you know, draw. It's it's fine. It's good. It does what it needs to do. We have a single copy of Abyss Dweller, probably the strongest rank 4 in the game. Uh, I probably don't need to elaborate on that anymore. Tornado Dragon just for pesky back row removal. Baguska, if you don't really see anything else and you can just make a rank 4, you can make this and then pass turn. And that can sometimes be enough to stall you out for a couple of turns. Rajinti Sukiyomi, this is just for being able to dig deeper and of course get rid of bricks out your hand. Yeah, it, it works okay enough in this deck. And then onto our links here. Curious is, uh, I probably don't really need to elaborate on Curious. Uh, IP Masquerina because it's a good play to set up going first so that you can interrupt your opponent. Usually with one of these two. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn. Again, pretty self-explanatory cards for me. Borosaur Dragon has come down massively in price. Much easier to get hold of and can be an absolute OTK machine. So definitely a good option to have in here. A single copy of Skull Dread because you actually can spam so many monsters out. And if your opponent doesn't have Nibiru, you are going to go off like fucking crazy. And this card is going to help facilitate that. 
And then our last two extra deck cards are Borrowed Savage Dragon because it's a generic negate. It's easy enough to make in this deck. It's just very, very strong and I think that you need to run it. And then finally, our last and fitting Light Swan card in here, Michael of the Ark Light Swan. Um, yeah, it's Michael. It, it's good spot removal. It can help put stuff back into your deck. It can help boost your life points if you're really in a pinch, although usually you don't want to do that. It's an extra name. It's just everything you could possibly want in a Light Swan card. And that, my amigos, is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either case, thank you for being one of the rare few who does make it all the way to the end. Now, it is worth knowing that we don't just do deck profiles on the channel. We are going through a slew of them at the moment due to the thing that's going on in the world that I can't mention without getting demonetized. But when our locals and events resume, we'll have vlogs from all of those going on every single week for locals and every single regional we can get to. Any YCS we can get to, nationals, you name it. If we can get there, we're going to damn well do a vlog about it. We also occasionally have the likes of combo tutorials. We have tons and tons of how to play videos. And if there is something that you'd like to see that you haven't seen on the channel so far, go ahead and let me know. I'm always open to new ideas. Unless those new ideas involve playing a pendulum-based deck, in which case you're on your own. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Thank you very much for making it this far into this video. Once again, hopefully you've hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.